First of all, we have to celebrate the first trillion dollars. We just crossed the first trillion. I don't know how long it's going to stay at this point for. So I think um, Hertz would be a good stock to, to get over the long term. Hello everyone, my name is Kasim. Welcome to the channel. So in today's video, we are going to talk about two different things. We are going to celebrate the momentous occasion of Tesla hitting $1 trillion. We're going to talk talk about that. We're going to talk about why they hit a tr trillion dollars. And we are also going to talk about the highlights. This is a two part video. It's going to be under 30 minutes like most of my videos, 20, 30 minutes. So for your convenience, I've included a timestamp in the description. If you want to get straight to the earnings, you can click on the timestamp for the earnings. It's going to say highlight earnings. And then if you want to watch this whole thing, there's timestamp. So watch, uh, click below and check out the timestamps for this video. And also, I highly encourage you to watch this video at maybe 1.5 speed. So you quickly go through it and it's not going to take too much of your time. All my videos are usually under 30 minutes. Appreciate you. Let's get right into the video. We're going to talk really briefly about Tesla stock currently. So I'm going to pull it up right now because we are celebrating. Like I always say in my videos, I always say that Tesla is going to be a multi-trillion dollar co company. I've said this numerous times. I don't know how many trillion Tesla is going to get to. First of all, we have to celebrate the first trillion dollars. We just crossed the first trillion. I don't know how long it's going to stay at this point for. The stock is currently trading for $1,000. And at some point, at some point, this was actually up more than what I put in. So it was very interesting. But we are trending downwards on the actual stock price. But, you know, here we're looking good. Well, yeah, so far, so good. We are celebrating. Uh, I really do appreciate all the Tesla investors and also all the Tesla employees is because of you guys. And of obviously Elon Musk. Uh, yeah, it's a great day. It's a great momentous occasion that Tesla hit a trillion dollars. If you guys look in the past couple of days, Tesla stock has just been on a mad tear. Okay. It's been on a mad tear and we've just been going straight up, straight up. We were high at some point, 1,000, almost $1,100. 1,992 came back down a little bit. Looks like it's tracking back up. But we are up, you know, 26% in one week. 26% in just one week. Amazing. Okay. So congrats to all Tesla investors. This is this is all because of you guys. So the reason why Tesla stock hit that high um, of a number is Hertz, the rental car company. They basically said that they are going to buy 100,000 Model 3. So te uh, the $45,000 Model 3, they said they're going to buy 100,000 of it. So what does that mean for Tesla? That means that's a $4 billion income. You know, that's a $4 billion sale. $4 billion. So the stock had to reflect the, the, the amount the amount of, of uh, money that is i think that's why that's what happened why tesla stock went up went up mad went up like crazy um in the past couple of in the past couple of days we got the news around here and you know all day like yesterday the stock just went up like mad so like i keep saying on this channel the first trillion dollars is just the beginning if you think about this is just my opinion by the way my opinion, you know, I could be wrong. If you think about it, Hertz is buying this because, like, first of all, Tesla cars are cheaper to maintain. It's easier, it's easier for people to drive it. It's a new thing. And long term, I think it will be cheaper for, you know, the uh, for Hertz to buy Tesla over time. Because, obviously, they're just getting out of bankruptcy and they want to put themselves in the best place where their company can survive. Now, them buying a te them buying a fleet of Tesla is actually a pretty good move in my opinion because once Tesla come out with robo taxi, I keep talking about robo taxi. Once Tesla come out with robo taxi and it's getting approved and it keeps everybody can use it, now you're going to see a situation where Hertz has 100,000 cars. 
what's a robo taxi ready to go out? So instead of buying Uber or anything like that, I'll probably be buying Hertz stock, not financial advice, but I'll probably be buying Hertz stock. So this is a great move for Hertz because it's going to help their business long term. And even if you think about it, like most cars rent out for like on average, maybe 80 to $100 per day on like Hertz. So people will be able to jump into a Tesla maybe with like $100, $100 or maybe $120. A lot of people will be more than happy to do that, most likely. So I think Hertz would be a business that I'm going to be looking to, to, looking to buy. Um, let me pull up the Hertz um, current price right now. So this is Hertz. Hertz as a company, I think this would be a better play at the moment, which I'm going to be looking to buy some Hertz stock. Um, I think at the moment I can only buy the shares on TD Ameritrade, so I can't really get any uh, options on this. But I'm probably going to be buying some um, some 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 Hertz stock just because of this big move that they made. I think once they are able to, you know, put out all the Teslas, get the Teslas, once they're able to put, put them out, I think their stock is going to go up tr uh, dramatically, um, you know, because they will be the largest owners, fleet owner of this Tesla RoboTaxi that is basically ready to go. So I think um, Hertz would be a good stock to, to get over the long term. So yeah, that's the reason why uh, Tesla got to $1 trillion. Hertz bought 100,000 cars from Tesla. And I think, you know, it's good for Hertz. You know, it's good for them. It's going to make their business stronger. It's a smart move. I think all the other rental car company, they probably will, will be looking to do the same. So, you know, this might be another big move coming. You know, I don't know how long it's going to take for the move to come. But like this might actually be another big move that is going to happen if enterprise place their own order. And that's like the two biggest car rental, you know, uh, companies in the U.S. You know, how about the ones all over the world that they want to get the best EV? They want to like everybody keep talking about competition, competition for Tesla. How come Hertz? Remember, the person that is in charge of Hertz used to be the current CEO although he's an interim CEO, but the current CEO of Hertz used to be a uh, Ford CEO. How come he's not buying Ford Mark E? That's food for thoughts. How come he's not buying any of those ones? The guy has a plan, and I think it's going to be using the cars for RoboTaxi by next year ending or by 2023, 24, 25. That's the plan that this guy is, that this, this guy is working towards. So it's a very smart plan, very smart man. Um, and, you know, this is all great news for Tesla investors, you know. Great news for Tesla investors. Like I said, the stock is doing, literally going off the chart. So I'm going to keep on doing what I'm doing. As always, you know, I keep buying my $20 a day worth of the Tesla stock. From what I just showed you guys earlier, you know, we're up you know a couple dollars 50 bucks right there i'm gonna keep doing my thing i think tesla in the future will be worth as much as apple you know apple is worth like two point two point something trillion dollars if i take a look at apple real quick apple is worth 2.5 trillion right here you guys see you guys see right here apple is currently worth 2.5 trillion the next is microsoft you know then then amazon you know like I think in the future, minimum, Tesla will be worth $2.5 or $3 trillion. So for me, I think the best place for me to put my money right now, keep on doing what I'm doing with the $30 a day, no matter what the price is at the moment, because this uh, Hertz news is just the beginning. Enterprise is probably going to do the same. All the other car rental companies all over the world, they're going to do the same because they're going to keep on doing their research and, and see that, you know, like Tesla is going to come out with this robo taxi and they are going to they're going to work eventually. You know, two point five trillion, three trillion is still coming in the future. 
you know, let's not forget about Robo Taxi. Anyways, I don't want to make this section too long. Check out my previous video that I did. You guys know I'm always hyped about Tesla. Uh, check out the video, previous video that I recorded. I'm going to put a link in the cards for you to check out. Go check out that video. Let's get into the highlights of the earnings call because the earnings call is very important. I always love talking about the earnings call. You know, so what we're going to do now is you're going to watch just the highlights. And then in the next couple of videos, I'll keep working on the earnings call so I can add my own opinions to each of the earnings call. Like every single thing that was said in the earnings call, I'll add my opinion opinions to it. So, you know, like if you guys take a look before before I go into the highlight, if you guys take a look, we are doing very well here. This investment has returned 300 over 300 percent. OK, we're doing very well. I'm not going to say like, I'm, you know, I'm the ish. You know, I do know what I'm doing when it comes to my own money. So I do my research. I do everything. I do my research. I know what I'm doing with my own money. So you got to do your research as well. But yeah, let's get into the highlight of the earnings call. Appreciate you for watching. So the next thing that we're going to do now is we are going to watch the highlights of the earnings call. OK, we're going to watch the highlights of the earnings call. And basically, we're going to just, you know, watch it. I'm not going to say anything. I'm just going to watch it with you guys. It's just a highlight. We're continuing to make great progress as a company, setting new records on each of the most important financial metrics for Q3. We were also able to achieve an annualized production run rate of over 1 million cars towards the end of the quarter. Additionally, we have made great progress increasing production volumes of Model S, but based on demand, we are targeting to exceed historical production levels. Due to part shortages and logistics variability, we have not been able to run our factories at full capacity. It's important to note that while we have roughly doubled deliveries year to date, this has been exceptionally difficult to achieve. Despite these increases in production and generally higher prices, our backlogs are continuing to grow and average customer wait times are extending. Financially, our auto gross margins reached 30.5% on a gap basis and just under 29% excluding regulatory credits. This benefit primarily comes from higher volumes, particularly out of the Shanghai factory, increased mix of the Model Y, as we and we have made good progress increasing Model S volumes. The Model S has now returned to positive gross margin, and we expect this to increase with higher production and the ramp of Model X. As a result of the great progress on margins, volume, and appropriate management of overhead costs, we were able to achieve an operating margin of just under 15%, exceeding the long-term guidance we've laid out previously. On cash, we generated record operating cash flows of $3.1 billion and continue to invest heavily in the build-out of manufacturing, supercharging, and service capacity. We also continue to retire high interest rate debt, including the early settlement of our 2025 senior notes of $1.8 billion during the quarter. As we look forward, we are clearly quite a bit ahead of the pacing required to achieve our target annual growth rate of 50% this year. We are also nearing assembly of our first production cars in Austin and Berlin. Uh, what is Tesla's goal for vehicle production capacity for the four current factories, Fremont, Shanghai, Austin, and Berlin by 2024? Yeah, thanks, Martin. Um, you know, our, our goal as a company here is to grow um, on an average pace of 50% per year. And, uh, and so you can extrapolate that out you know, that there may be some periods of time in which we're well ahead of that. There could be some periods of time, uh, despite F effort, best efforts, where we're slightly lower than that. Uh, but that that remains the long-term goal of the company. Uh, in in Fremont, you know, we're we're continuing to push the boundaries of what's possible there. You know, over the last 12 months, we've done about 430,000 cars of production, and you know, based upon it everything that we know in the factory, where the bottlenecks are, what the potential is, uh, we're, we're targeting to increase that another 50%. You know, as we look towards Shanghai, uh, we're continuing to push the boundaries there, and we continue to ramp production there as well. So most recently, the ramp of the Model Y, uh, which was our biggest contributor of volume in Q3, uh, will continue to ramp that factory. You know, and, and our plans there with time are to, to keep growing the capacity in that factory. Um, Austin and Berlin are, are interesting factories because you know, our first iterations of capacity there are on Model Y. But we've intentionally uh, set these factories in locations in which they have a quite 
a significant amount of land and ability to expand. We're trying to get to 5,000 cars a week as soon as we can, and then we'll continue to push beyond that, uh, potentially even getting to 10,000 cars per week at those factories. Uh, and then we'll add Cybertruck here in Austin um, and continue to grow from there. So, you know, our, our goal is to get to millions of cars per year over the next couple of years, and then ultimately in the long term, be able to achieve 20 million cars per year. We're going to grow as, as quickly as is feasibly possible with an eye towards a 50% annual growth rate. Over the last year, we've grown our physical footprint of service centers by 35%. We've grown our footprint of mobile repair by over 40%. But I, I think the most important part about all of this is, uh, and we've said this on calls before, where the best service is no service. <laughs> And so uh, we have been incredibly focused as a company, both on um, the initial quality of our vehicles and reliability of our vehicles. Uh, and we've seen pretty substantial improvements in both of those metrics um, over the long term and over the last couple of quarters. Just one thing to add on supercharging. Uh, you know, if you haven't experienced um, our latest iteration of battery packs that can handle fast charge rates, in combination with um, our 250 watt kilowatt charging stations is pretty incredible. And this is a really important component to supercharging capacity because uh, the faster you can charge, the more charge sessions that you can have on an individual post, uh, the better the customer experience is as you're going on a long-term journey uh, because your supercharging times are lower. Yeah, pricing has been a really difficult thing for us uh, over the last couple of quarters. Um, and you know, where part of the, part of the challenge is, well, uh, I mean, the great thing that we're seeing in the space right now is you know, there there appears to just be quite a profound awakening of the desirability for electric vehicles. And I mean, to be totally frank, it's caught us a little bit off guard. And you know that that kind of awakening and and change in consumer sentiment. Uh, I'm sure there's lots of reasons that go into it, but um, folks want to buy an electric car and folks want to buy a Tesla right now. Uh, it's very exciting for us. You know, at the same time, you know, we have installed capacity to build more cars, but we're constrained by a number of dynamics, as we've talked about in great detail. Uh, and we are putting in extreme effort to build as many cars as we possibly can. Uh, it's it's hard to overstate how extreme the efforts are. It's quite the grind. Anyway, great to hear there's a team at uh, Tesla, not just a one person show. Um, I wanna drill down a bit more. Um, so it, it remains our target um, in both Austin and Berlin to be able to build our first production cars before the end of the year. You know, we've talked about this a bit, you know, the unknown unknowns, new factories, new vehicle designs, new technologies, new locations, new re new teams. So, you know, th there is uh, quite an execution journey ahead of us. Uh, but that remains our target and all of our plans are oriented around that. Uh, we, we should not expect for, for us to deliver cars by the end of 2021 from these factories, even if we do produce some. We are carrying some amount of cost associated with the factories today. Uh, and so the, the incremental cost associated with turning the factories, you know, it's not 100% of a factory, uh, if that's what you're getting at in your question. Yes. Yep, that's yeah. what I was getting at. Yeah. We also actually saw a very similar dynamic to this when we were launching um, Model S earlier in the year. So, you know, when when, fact, when a product starts launching um, and then you know, cost, cost of goods sold starts to activate, depreciation starts to activate, um, you know, there's, there's a bit of a, a movement in the P&L as to where that cost resides. So, yes, I mean, to some extent, Brandenburg and Austin costs are already flowing through our P&L, but we still need to continue staffing and ramping and incurring all the operating costs associated with a factory that we're not spending right now. So, I mean, at, at the highest level here, you know, we entered the insurance market uh, kind of unintentionally, I would say. You know, our customers were coming to us complaining that the price of traditional insurance was too high and it was reducing the affordability of a Tesla. And part of our journey here at Tesla is we want as many people as possible to be able to afford our products. That's extremely important to achieving the mission of the company. 
And if you look at the price of insurance as a percentage of what somebody's monthly payment is, it's quite high. And we spend extreme amounts of effort in manufacturing to take $5 of bomb cost out here or $10 out somewhere else. If we can get um, you know, $5, 10 20 $30 out on a monthly payment, you can calculate what that means in terms of reduction of, of the price of the car if you finance it. And the leverage of improving insurance cost is huge in terms of affordability. And, uh, you know, at Tesla, because our cars are connected, because they are essentially computers on wheels, there's enormous amounts of data that we have available to us to be able to assess uh, the attributes of a driver who's operating that car and whether those attributes uh, correlate with safety. So we've been spending our time looking looking at you know hundreds of different variables uh, and also looking at billions of miles of driving history. And we've been able to fit a model that uh, is able to predict with decent accuracy the probability of collision over a period of time. And, and from that model, being able to predict frequency of collision, we can then align that against a price curve. And we can have ind individualized pricing uh, integrated into the car, integrated into the app, integrated into that customer's experience with a feedback loop back to the customer on how they are driving after every drive, the attributes that they were successful on or unsuccessful on, and the tips of things that they can do to improve their safety. Uh, so that's what we've developed. We then included the safety score as a part of the FSD beta enrollment program where you know, we have almost 150,000 cars currently using the safety score, uh, and I believe the latest data is over 100 million miles of driving. So we've been able to go back and analyze that data, and we've learned two things coming from that. The first is that uh, the probability of collision for a customer using a safety score versus not is 30% lower. It's a pretty big difference. It means that the product is working and customers are responding to it. The second thing we, that we've looked at is what is the probability of collision based upon actual data as a function of a driver's safety score? Uh, and that is aligning with our models. Most notably, you know, if you're in the top tier of safety compared to lower tiers, you know, there's you know, multiple X difference in probability of collision based upon action. There appears to just be quite a profound awakening of the desirability for electric vehicles. And I mean, to be totally frank, it's caught us a little bit off guard. Uh, the probability of collision for a customer using a safety score versus not is 30% lower. It's a pretty big difference. It means that the product is working and customers are responding to it. You know, we entered the insurance market uh, kind of unintentionally, I would say. You know, our customers were coming to us complaining that the price of traditional insurance was too high. And part of our journey here at Tesla is we want as many people as possible to be able to afford our products. That's extremely important to achieving the mission of the company. And if you look at the price of insurance as a percentage of what somebody's monthly payment is, it's quite high. And we spend extreme amounts of effort in manufacturing to take $5 of bomb cost out here or $10 out somewhere else. If we can get um, you know, $5, 10 20 $30 out on a monthly payment, you can calculate what that means in terms of reduction of, of the price of the car if you finance it. And the leverage of improving insurance cost is huge in terms of affordability.